Hello YouTube, it's uh, FS Derek here again and uh, we're going to go flying again. We're at Manston Echo Golf Mike Hotel in our trusty Cessna 152. It's cold and dark which as I said is how you're going to find the plane normally. I've done the walk around so we're clear to start so I'm going to press uh, shift A a couple of times get us down to the electrics as we saw in previous video we put some electricity through the starter motor at the same time we'll turn the beacon on so that people know that we're just about to start the prop and they should stand clear and press A a couple of times again take us back to the main dashboard and what we want to do is push in the mixture because that's how the engine was stopped if you remember last time so got the parking brakes on and we'll, um, we'll have done our call to air traffic control telling them that uh, I'm requesting a radio check and telling them that we're going to start up so let's move both the ignitions over to start and sure enough we've got everything going now we've got an error message here on the volts because um, the battery is not charging and that's really just simply because we haven't turned the alternator on so let's go back down to the electrics shift a a couple of times and turn on the alternator and then we'll see that the uh, voltage warning light's gone away and we can also turn everything else on now so I'll turn the landing taxi lights on the nav lights and uh, we'll energize the uh, radio and all the other electrical equipment so, other than the fuel pump, we are pretty well set. So, let's have a quick look around and we'll get straight off. The brake on flight simulator is the what the Americans would call the period key, what we call full stop key in the UK. Full stop, I think, is uh, makes more sense, doesn't it? For a, key that brings you to a full stop. Oh, let's just stay well away from this plane. In fact, I could probably have gone around that side, but I'm going to stay well away from it. Now, as far as taxing speeds go, you will have uh, heard several people say that you have to taxi at walking speed, and in general that is true. Um, although you will find that jets taxi um, considerably faster than walking speed um, and you may ask yourself why would a plane that's built to land at uh, in, in the case of jets uh, anything uh, around about 120 160 even knots why do they need to be taxied at uh, such slow speeds and the answer is the big jets don't but um, small planes like this can't be rushed uh, especially in windy conditions and that's because the wind will pick up a wing and cause the plane to tip over especially if it's um, taxiing fast into wind or with one wing up wind so the general rule is you should always move the flight stick over towards the direction of the wind so if the wind's coming from the right then you move the stick over to the right. If the wind's coming from the left, you move the stick over to the left. Now you'll see, obviously, that makes absolutely no difference at all to uh, the direction the plane's steering in, and that's everything to do with the rudders, which is uh, which are operated by your feet down here. And what we're going to do today is go and see my house, because if you... Uh, I've installed the um, VFR scenery, and uh, this is a series about flying really in the way that real pilots do and uh, you know you're spending quite a lot of money flying this plane you want to do something interesting with it don't you and what could be more interesting than going and seeing your own house so we're at the threshold to uh, 28 which is um, we're at the Bravo hold which is the second hold I'm not going to bother to taxi down to the Alpha hold again so we'll tell them that we're um, clear for takeoff now I'm just going to do a very quick run up on the ground so we'll press control period or control full stop to put the parking brakes on and then we'll make sure the mixture's rich and then we'll throttle up while making sure that the plane doesn't 
start moving. Yeah, it's just started moving there, so we need to be careful not to encroach upon the runway. Let's stop it again. And then we should be doing this into wind, as I said last time. I'm just going to very quickly check that the, the emission's fine. So we do right and both, left and both, and then idle just to check it doesn't stall. Have a quick look around the runway, make sure nothing's landing and then it brakes off, throttle up a bit. I'm going to put down uh, 10 degrees of flaps as we did before when you're entering the runway. As I say there should be nothing on the runway but it uh, doesn't never hurts to um, just have a little look and then we're going to do a rolling start It's going to precess to the left again, so you just have to fight it a bit to keep it straight. There it goes. Fight it. Lots of right rudder. Okay. Now we're starting to get uh, more influenced by the uh, wind. So let the thing lift off, and then I'm keeping over to the right-hand side of the runway. The reason we do that is that. Uh, the pilot sitting on the left, you've got a much better view of the runway down there than you would have if you were trying to see the runway down here. So left it is. Now we're 300 feet above the ground so up goes the flaps and we're going to climb on the limit of the white flap arc here because as I said that's the best climb speed really for most air aircraft. Now you're going to see a bit of weirdness with the scenery because what's happening is that the bit we're flying over is um, VFR. So that is actually um, what you, we would see properly. And then a bit further away in the distance, we're not seeing um, the VFR tiles. And in fact you can see this because if I go to top down view, if I press S and go to the outside view and then A and then A again, then A again to the top down view and then I press the minus key you'll see that we're flying along in our own patch of tiles which are changing as we go along so that's not um, very clever so I'll we'll have to see what we can do about that might be something to do with the view distance or anyway we've got the North Kent coast over to the right and that's where we're going to go and find my house because we're, in, we're looking for Whitstable. It's annoying that, isn't it? Half VFR and half uh, standard scenery. It may be that that's um, a problem with uh, the cache. I'll have to see if I can't uh, perhaps increase the size of the cache or something. Or cache the local tiles so it doesn't read them. There'll be a solution to it somewhere. Now as far as flying, uh, around here you are if, if you go too high and by too high I mean over 5,000 feet you are going to start infringing on the London airspace and that, that's the approach into um, Heathrow and Gatwick so we have to be pretty careful so 2,000 is quite a nice uh, sensible flying altitude for um, uh, this sort of flight so I'm going to head towards the North Kent coast I'm levelling off at uh, 2,000 feet. Let's just uh, reset the compass and reset the barometer. So it's D for the uh, reset the direction indicator to the compass and B to set the barometer. And the barometer you can see is reading 29.92 um, inches of mercury. Now in Europe we tend to use hectopascals, so that would be 1013.25. So I don't know whether we can change that. We might be able to. I'm still at full throttle, and in fact you don't really want to cruise at full throttle, so it's just too wasteful of fuel. So that's the, uh, that's Whistable over there. So I'll just change my direction slightly. There we go. It's about a 20 minute round trip, this. That's the A299 Thanet Way. 
bypass. It took years to build. They uh, tried to drive it through a golf course and the people who owned the golf course said they didn't really want a golf course that was on two sides of a bypass. So they actually built a tunnel. It's the only tunnel on the road and it goes underneath the golf course. This is not a championship golf course we're talking about here. This is just like the local town golf course. So when you're settling, when, when you're, you've reached altitude, um, you'll be going slowly because you'll be climbing. So the first thing you want to do is speed up. So um, you put the nose down to come out of the climb and start flying level and you will speed up and that's called adjusting your attitude. The attitude is the sort of the position of the plane. And then uh, when you've leveled off you'll, you'll find that you'll start to go too fast because you've got climb power on and of course you're flying level so you have to reduce power. So then you adjust the power and then lastly uh, because it's tiring to fight against the control stick there's a thing called the trim. If you see down there there's a, a wheel which oops, let's just go back. There's a wheel there which uh, goes up and goes down, and that allows you to um, offset some of the sort of the springy pressure of the control stick when you're trying to uh, fight to hold a plane in a, at a certain attitude. So when levelling off from a climb, it's it's attitude, power, and trim. APT. Now let's see where we are. That looks like Tankerton. So I'm sure we're not too far away. Let's avoid the temptation to dive into the ground while looking out and trying to find, find out where we are. There's the Fennet Way. This um, VFR scenery apparently is best viewed from about 3,000 feet. The closer you get to London, of course, the um, lower you have to fly. So, for example, you can fly at 5,000 feet over Dover, but you certainly can't fly at 5,000 feet uh, as, you, as you get closer to London because the London airspace comes down further down closer you get. Right, you can see one of the problems of flying a plane single-handed here is that uh, it's very difficult to maintain an altitude while uh, with your eyes outside the cockpit. So when you add reading a map and everything into that when you're in strange territory of course it gets worse and worse. So the um, the waves, you know, don't look quite right, do they? They certainly don't look like that. And I find in flight simulator the best thing, really, the most realistic thing to do, believe it or not, is turn everything off. Turn water effects off. Turn the shadow of the plane on the ground off because you know you might once in a lifetime you might see the shadow of your plane on the ground. You certainly don't miss it if you don't see it. Um, now that's Tankerton Slope, so we're nearly there. That's a nice place to go in the summer. If you um, want to just uh, relax, you see the slopes there, the grassy slopes. Okay, well we're going to be able to see my house on this occasion because of the, um, the scenery problem. But having said that, we've had a little fly. The weather's not brilliant. Actually, the weather's at the moment, we've got about a 3,500 ceiling, um, which when you're flying along at two, two and a half thousand is probably not is okay, you know. When you're um, you want to go flying, the weather's never brilliant. But you can fly in most weathers. In fact, you can't as a student. They'll be very fussy about what you fly in. But um, when you um, when you get a share in your own plane, perhaps you can take it up. You know, unless you're completely mad. 
in which case everyone will tell you and stop you flying. So let's follow the Thanet way back and then we'll, uh, we'll end up landing back at Manston. Over to the right there's Canterbury and uh, we'll be able to see the cathedral. Uh, probably not today, but at some point we'll Next to um, Whitstable is Herne Bay. Uh, quite a large elderly population. Whitstable's got a quite a large elderly and retired population. Whitstable and Herne Bay, nicknamed Hernia Bay. Now when you're flying along, um, if you look at that Thanet Way, that's actually quite a good uh, way to find your way back, isn't it? Because we know, we know the Thanet Way goes to Margate and the airport's in Margate and the airport's so big you can't miss it. Um, it's very common when you are looking for smaller airfields to miss them. Um, and in fact, I have nearly run out of fuel on one occasion trying to find a, a farm field that wasn't actually a, a proper strip but just been mowed for the occasion of me landing there. So um, I'll just give you a little bit of um, information about landmarks. Obviously the biggest landmark we can see here is the North Kent coast and that's marvellous. Large bodies of water like the Thames estuary, <laughs> you can't really miss them. So um, either I'm in North Kent flying east or there's something extremely wrong. Uh, and because, uh, you know, it'd have to be extremely wrong, wouldn't it? It'd have to be, I'd have to have drifted over to the South King Coast or something to get that wrong. So, so actually following coastlines uh, are really quite good. Roads are good, but they do tend to all look the same. So you can be uh, following the M25 and find that you're following the M26. Or uh, following the M25, you're following the, the A1. And... They're not as easy, I know, I know they're not signposted, but they're not as easy to follow in the air as they are on the ground motorways. The other thing you'll notice is that I'm following it, I've got it in, in view out of my left hand window there. That's the, uh, there we are, not all the cars are parked on it for some reason, I don't know why. But, um, once again, that's another consequence. Oh, you see, now I'm not concentrating. I was 500 feet there. Uh, it's another consequence of the pilot sitting on the left is that when you're following anything, you want to keep an eye on it out of the left-hand window. Just see the um, lights of Manston coming into uh, view there. Now, if everybody follows everything out of the left-hand window, then it, it follows that everyone flies on the right hand side so we're flying on the right hand side of the road and a plane coming the other way following the road the other way would it would be on the other side of the road so that just increases safety now the circuit height on Manston I've said is a thousand feet above ground level and Manston we know is about 200 feet above ground so we're looking to join the circuit at about uh, 1200 feet and because it's such a big runway, I can see it from miles away, and I know that um, pretty well we, we, when we get to those lights, we're going to need to be about 1,200 feet. So I'm, I'm just going to go into a gentle descent. So I'm going to cut the power slightly, because we're going to get energy from the descent, so we need less energy from the, uh, the plane. And also, we don't want to do everything at 120, 130 knots, because just everything happens too fast. So let's put ourselves in a gentle descent and then we'll, uh, we'll make a radio call to Manson at this point, tell them we've got the runway in sight and we are, let's say, two miles to the west to land. And they will then um, give us the weather, the wind and um, tell us what to do. So what we're going to do, if you remember from the first flight, which was a circuit, the first leg of the circuit, the one where you take off and turn left, that, that first leg is called the crosswind leg. And so obviously we're, we're not going to need to do the crosswind leg on this point. We're actually going to join at the junction of the crosswind and the base leg, uh, crosswind and the downwind leg. It's called the crosswind leg because assuming that the wind's blowing down the runway, which it should be, on the crosswind leg, you're, you're going to have the wind 
on one side of you, aren't you? If it's a left-hand circuit, then the wind's going to be on the right-hand side, or the, uh, the starboard side. Most circuits are left-hand, and once again that's because the pilot sits on the left. So, if you sit on the left, and you want to fly around in a circle, you want to fly in a left-hand circle, don't you? So that you can always see what's, uh, what you're flying around. In this case, we're flying around the runway. So we're a little bit high on the, uh, on the downwind. Oh, there we are, there's a jet taking off. You see some uh, fantastic sights from the air. And in fact, it's, it's, I was in pretty much this position when um, uh, the Red Arrows took off from Manston and I had to orbit in this position here, fly around in circles in this position until they, they lined up and, and took off. Uh, and I was dizzy after doing that, I can tell you. So we're doing 90 knots and we're, we're about 1200 feet and we're on the downwind. So this is where you'd call downwind now, if you were required to call downwind. You're not always required to call downwind, but it's protocol. Good, it's good to, to do that. Now, there's a, there's another funny thing. Of course, you can see in terms of altitude, the runway. Um, now I've put the VFR scenery in. There's quite a bit of uh, quite a few steps in the scenery, and that's caused by a mismatch between the altitude of the default scenery and the altitude coordinates of the uh, VFR scenery and it's that's a you know that's an annoyance but it's nothing terminal so we're now going to start to turn the base leg once again 20 degrees is fine you're going quite slowly at this point the more you bank the plane over the faster you need to go to stop it stalling. So in fact, you really don't want to bank it over too much when you're going slowly. There's the runway. So, I'm a little bit high so I'm just going to cut the throttle. Now remember what I said about losing speed, I want to lose some speed so I'm going to pull the nose up and there's the speed and now we can drop the first stage of flaps and the extra drag from those flaps will also slow the plane down so now I'm going to feed a bit more throttle in I'm going to put another stage of flaps down now it's a scrappy approach as I say but don't worry you know you don't need a three degree approach what you need is a safe approach and what I'm doing is I'm correcting probably still a little bit high so I'm going to cut the throttle again I'm going to put the nose down to maintain the speed because we want to keep our speed up and I'm going to put the last stage of flaps down so a bit more throttle because I'm worried about being a bit low now I'm not putting the throttle up to get the speed up I'm putting the throttle up to so I don't end up low there we go so we'll call finals to land 28 and they'll get our landing clearance and we'll read back and clear to land 28. Go Foxtrot Mike. I'm feeding power in a bit as we come into land. Because I don't want to uh, do an engine off landing. That's floating. That's it. There we go. Now it's a bit extravagant with the runway there, but let's face it, you can be on a runway like this. Put the flaps up to avoid uh, ground effect. And vacate right. Let's not tip the plane over. But let's get off the runway. That's it. And we can report vacated runway two right. Right, there we have it. So a quick trip to Whistable and Bank. Didn't see the house. 
got the VFR scenery in place, but uh, still I haven't really got uh, that working properly. There'll be some sort of uh, trick with that. So what I'll do is I won't make you wait while I taxi the plane in. I'll take it back and put it to bed, and then uh, I'll put it over on the apron because someone else is going to want to fly it probably today. And uh, I'll see you next time.